Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Law and Crime. I'm Jesse Weber, and thanks for joining us. We're about to jump live right now in a new trial, so we don't have much time to waste. This trial is that of a former cheerleader accused of killing her newborn. 20-year-old Brooke Schuyler Richardson is facing aggravated murder, manslaughter, child endangerment, tampering with evidence, and abuse of corpse charges in connection with the death of her baby, Annabelle. The story that we've heard so far, the defendant gave birth to Annabelle 48 hours after her senior prom, killed her, and then proceeded to burn and bury the body in her backyard. The question, of course, is what is the defense? Well, Richardson claims that the baby was stillborn, never opening her eyes or showing any signs of life. So while she didn't kill Annabelle, she did bury her with small roses in a hole. Wow, what a powerful opening statement right there. We have a lot to break down, and joining me are two very special guests. First here on set, professor from New York Law School, Professor Kirk Burkhalter is with us. Thanks so much for joining us. Good and to see you. Great to see you, and also joining us via Skype, forensic death investigator from Jacksonville State University. University, Joseph Scott Morgan. Joseph, good morning to you. All right, so Professor, let's start with you. Opening statement's very powerful, very important moment. What was the message that you were left with at the conclusion of that? Well, two things. So one, they, uh, the prosecutor certainly identified a motive, and second, he uh, elaborated on how she prepared uh, in advance. So this is a direct uh, rebuttal of the defense's uh, case that this was the baby was stillborn and that this was not premeditated. Those actions before and after are just, wow, I didn't know the details of it, but the idea of looking up on the internet how to get rid of a baby, that's going to be tough for the defense to argue against. We're waiting to jump back live with the defense's opening statement. Joseph, let me get your perspective on something here. Homicidal violence, the cause of death, what did you take from that? Because there seemed to be some uh, questions about exactly how this baby died. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you precisely what I took away from it uh, is the fact that uh, there's hardly anything left. Uh, we have skeletal remains. Keep in mind that developmentally, uh, you know, they're saying that that this baby was 38 to 40 weeks uh, full term. Um, you know, uh, the, a baby's body is not fully developed, so the tissues themselves, even the bones, are very, very soft. So. Uh, the fact that we have this much left is significant, but there's not enough to kind of, uh, you know, pin uh, some specific cause of death relative to this. I'll be very interested to hear what the forensic experts have to say uh, uh, during their examination on the scene, on the right. on the stand. So, yeah, this this is going to be compelling. Okay, so it's getting a little choppy right there, but it gives us a great opportunity to break down what we've seen. Professor, let's start with you. What a defense opening right now. Uh, great response to the prosecution, even playing clips from the interrogation video, which he believes is the key point in this case. So let's start there. The interrogation video, is it being looked at in the wrong context? I mean, how, how did you view it, especially with the police tactics, to get information from her? Well, in the wrong context, it depends who... Uh, is looking. So from my perspective, um, I think that the detective used very, very uh, strong interrogation techniques, didn't muscle the defendant. The police are allowed to lie. They are allowed to do everything that this investigator did. And also trying to uh, get a person to be forthcoming with information based on not only for them, but for someone else. So all these techniques were absolutely fine. Right. To a jury, however, who's un, who doesn't have that experience, the defense attorney can present it and frame it in the way that he did. Look at this helpless child without a, an attorney, and the police kind of muscled her and refused to accept her version of the facts. And also the issue about the burning. Did it happen? Did it not? We're going to touch upon that in a second. Let's jump back live with more of the defense. All right, so again, a little bit of a choppy feed. Joseph, it gives us a good opportunity to talk about something. So the big issue here is also the burning. If it's true, if the prosecution can prove burning, it would sure look like a murder rather than a baby being stillborn. It helps tell that story. But how, we're going to have difficulty actually knowing that, correct? Yeah, yeah, you will. And, you know, it really gave me pause there when, uh, you know, they're talking about the, the forensic anthropologist initially saying uh, that, uh, that the body had been burned. Uh, with forensic anthropologists, just so we understand, when they examine remains, they take, uh, they're very, very uh, uh, particular, uh, very, uh, they're plotting when they do this sort of thing and that she would make this kind of snap judgment immediately and say, or pretty close thereafter, say that the body had been burned. 
with decompositional changes upon first blush, when you first take a look at the remains, you might say, you know, well, yeah, this could be burning, but the problem is, is that skeletal remains will initially kind of turn dark, and that's because the biological uh, tissue uh, that's still attached to the bone uh, many times will give this kind of um, uh, dark color to the bone. And, and that may have been what she was seeing, but uh, it, it's hard to imagine that someone of this stature, uh, this woman is highly respected, would make that determination so quickly and say that, yeah, there, there was burning. And this really put the police off on a on a on a different uh, a different track at this point. In time. Yeah, and then recanting that and going back and saying I made a mistake. Wow, that's that's definitely a point there for the defense if they can show that during the course of this trial. Let's jump back live again with the defense's opening statement. Okay, so Professor, a little bit of a choppy feed. I want to just still talk about what happened here. The idea of a of a expert coming back and then saying, wait a second. Made a, made a mistake here, not burning, and then we believe the defense has mm -hmm. another expert to show that, that there was no evidence of the burning as well. I mean, that's a big issue that was being made by the defense here. What's your thoughts on it? Well, it's a huge issue, and to, to, if you look at it thematically, it's great for the defense if they can discredit the investigation. So you have already the defense discrediting the police department with their interrogation techniques. So now you discredit the methodology and the findings of the forensic pathologist. So, you know, these are folks that most people tend to trust. We, there's a rebuttable presumption that they're telling the truth, that they're honest, and what they say we can trust. And the minute you kind of burst that bubble a little bit, everything is fair game. You also mentioned to me something uh, as we were watching it. We didn't hear a ton from the defense about how do we know this baby was a stillborn? Absolutely, absolutely. So Skyler, it, it, during um, the opening, the defense mentioned that Skyler was in the bathroom on the floor when the baby was born, and then just cut right away to the fact that she buried the baby in the backyard. So we didn't hear a lot of information on how she knew it was stillborn. He came back to the topic during the police interrogation, but that's a gap, that's a missing gap there. And, and Joseph, uh, you tell me, I imagine the infant's viability at birth is gonna be a major issue in this case. So what should we be thinking about in terms of that and whether or not this baby was in fact a stillborn? I don't think that there's gonna be any way to tell, Jesse, just simply based on uh, you know what we've seen of the remains, and you know they presented those early on. One of the things that traditionally has been done for years and years uh, with uh, so-called stillbirths is that at 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 autopsy, what will happen? And I'm going to be kind of graphic here, so just bear with me. The lungs will be tested at autopsy to see if they actually float. Now this is kind of a controversial test. It's been used for many years and that the theory behind it is this just think of it as a balloon if if the lungs have been aerated that means that inhalation has taken place those lungs will be expanded sufficiently to have them float in water absent that aeration the lungs will essentially sink the lungs are literally placed into a container of water and this is kind of tested it's very rudimentary and primitive but it's been relied on for for years and years and so we don't have any lungs everything is gone all of the soft tissue is gone so this is quite the conundrum moving forward the the next the next step would be uh well did they see anything in the margins of the bone that would give indication of any kind of trauma mm -hmm. now i've heard this kicked around for a while there were crushing injuries of the skull and this sort of thing i don't know where this is coming from and so they haven't addressed this at this point and i don't even know if that's valid so absent that, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm fascinated. I want to find out where they're going to go in order to kind of prove viability here. Yeah, I agree with you. I think at this point, we're all left with more questions about exactly what the cause of death was, and we don't have a lot of information about that. But what they seem to be honing this case on, both the prosecution and the defense, are the words and the actions of the defendant before and after this event. That seems to be a big chunk, if not the whole chunk of this case. So we're gonna have to obviously talk more about this. The defense has just finished up with their opening statement. A first witness on the stand, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll be live.